Hey, you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, just had to like binge on all the posts and the updates from the three day refresh for those of you that have completed it and those um, that are just a day behind. I know you guys are going to roll in with results. So a couple things that I do want to say about that because I have been having conversations with a few um, off the group and just hoping that you can celebrate the fact that you committed to something, even if the results weren't exactly what you wanted or you start as Kiana had shared, comparing yourself to what other people are experiencing. Here's what you need to know. We are all wired differently. Some are going to see and experience those, um, those higher drops in numbers, um, whether it's weight or inches. And, um, some are going to see different and it's because we all started somewhere different, you know? So just keep that in mind. And, like Kiana said, she had a great piece of advice, um, whether she intended to or not, um, is to not compare ourselves to other people's results because you don't know where they started and what they had done prior to. And also their DNA is completely different than yours, you know, and some followed it to a T and others, they had to in you know, include some modifications, whether it's breastfeeding, medication, um, lifestyle, or just they think they're following it, but sometimes I need a little of this, you know, that could throw things off. Also, sleep can throw things off. Stress can throw things off. Um, reservations against it, you know, like your body harbors that and recognizes when you're holding tension and it will actually inhibit the stress hormone, which holds on to weight. Also, I know some had said, I'm having lots and lots of water and I don't know what's happening. And also if you overwater yourself, then perhaps your body actually retained that. So keep that in mind. So a couple little tips on the water that I shared with some of you guys is don't overwater yourself today, okay? Or in the next few phases until you start adding workouts in. And here's the general rule of thumb, okay? Obviously our baseline is half our body weight in ounces. I am encouraging you guys, if you're waking up to go to the bathroom, cut your water intake off by 7.30. You will sleep through it and you will not pee the, pee the bed or have to get up to go to the bathroom. I mean, I can't guarantee you won't pee the bed. But um, if you can avoid getting up in the night to go to the bathroom, if that's the only reason you get up to go to the bathroom, um, if you've got babies, I know that's kind of you know a tough thing, but we're working the best we can with your lifestyles right now, right? And you have to remember that. Um, your baseline, again, half your body weight in ounces. And if you're adding caffeine, you know, green tea, a cup of coffee, um, add in a little extra water, maybe four to eight ounces of extra water on top of your baseline water intake, okay? If you are like feeling good and tearing, I just need to go out and exercise, here's what I wanna tell you about exercise. Um, I really, really encourage you guys to still take the week easy. Go for a brisk walk, do yoga, do that sample bar workout. Your heart weight, your heart rate will raise, but you won't be adding a lot of blood volume and water into the muscle groups as you would be if you were doing like lift four or the work. So this is a reason why I intentionally took this week off from the work. And in fact, I'm actually going to take it off until I finish this 10 days of the bar workouts that I have access to. Um, because I really, A, I'm really intrigued by this bar program and B, I need my body to heal because the excessive weight and intensity of the work isn't wasn't cutting it anymore for me. So, but if you do add something that increases your heart rate, then consider adding an extra probably eight ounces of water on top of that baseline. And then on top of that with any caffeine intake. And then obviously for having alcohol, you know, alcohol generally recommended at least the first three days to be off limits. And if you can sustain it, go through the weekend without it. If you've got events and you know that you're looking forward to it, have a cocktail, but keep your food in check and know that your hydration needs to match the de dehydration of caffeine or any alcohol, okay? And you generally wanna have about six to eight extra ounces of water per cocktail, okay? But again, really work to try and keep that water intake, cut it off by 7.30 if you can. And going to bed early, you guys, is always gonna be your best friend and it's going to pay you deeply in the morning when you wake up refreshed and you see yourself in the mirror, feeling refreshed, feeling energized, and also the scale will be nice to you. So. Speaking of the scale and going into this reboot phase, okay? So we have three days. We're increasing our volume of food, absolutely. We're trying maybe new things, like the flax cereal might be like, oh, that sounds disgusting. But like Tracy tried, she's like, it's growing on me with every bite. 
You guys, I kind of had a little aversion to it at, be at the beginning, so I was like, this is so bland. But, you know, adding some cinnamon or pumpkin spice seasoning to it, like as long as it doesn't have sugar or salt in it, adding blueberries, a little raw honey is going to be just fine. It's not going to ruin anything as long as you're not dumping half a container on it, right? Um, rice milk is what I found to really allow it to be naturally sweetened because rice milk is naturally sweetened. Um, and I also found that I think I overdid it with almond milk for so many years that um, almond milk is a trigger for me. So I have to, ha I have rice milk instead and I still feel really good on rice milk. I don't feel like I'm getting a sugar rush, but it also just sweetens it a little bit better. So I use it in my shakes now and also with my, um, in my flax cereal, okay? So you're eating more this these next three days or you're, you're bringing in other foods, okay? So a couple things that I want you guys to be aware of. Tomorrow, if you decide to get on the scale, you may you don't have to. You can wait for the next three days and see how your body is. I just want you to be aware that maybe there could be a slight uptick. Just if you've changed your routine, if you add an exercise, you might see an uptick. If you increase your water intake, you might see an uptick. If you let something in that you were just missing so much, you're gonna see an uptick. If you follow the reboot phase as designed, um, you'll probably still see incredible results because your body is still in a detox mode. So the foods that you're consuming are naturally anti-inflammatory foods. So it's helping release any, you know, impending water retention that might still be hanging around. So the zucchini, um, the carrot and ginger soup, you guys, I love it. Like I'm so looking forward to it today because it's a little chilly here, um, but I love that soup. The ginger is so good. But I will say those of you that are breastfeeding, be mindful if the ginger is too much with nursing, you might wanna just kind of you know taper it back um, or just try little sips and see how the baby responds with any nursing. Cause you don't wanna aggravate obviously your breast milk, that's not the idea, um, but just make sure obviously if you're breastfeeding, you're increasing your water to you know account for that too. But our calorie intake is, re is increasing this week. And even if you don't do a lick of exercise, you're still going to need those calories because your body's working super, super hard. So I just wanna caution you that if you do add workouts and if you do increase your water or add caffeine, that could alter things a little bit, especially if you work out because your blood volume will increase and you got water to the joints to work on that muscle repair. And so that may skew your results. If you're gonna be on your period, it may change things, it may not. I have gone through this a couple times um, in just working through figuring out what foods aren't working for me. And um, my period came and surprised me one day and I had lost, I was still losing. So I was in weight loss mode. And when I say weight loss, let's also remind ourselves, you guys, we're not losing body fat. So for those that are losing excessive amounts of weight for the three days, it's water retention. There's inflammation that's been built up in our bodies that has been begging to be released. And that's what's happening. And then as we move forward after this 21 days, you're going to probably start obviously slowing down on weight loss, but you're going to see that it's actually body fat loss that you'll be in when you slow down incredibly as far as weight loss goes. So this week, we're going to see probably more of a jump in weight loss than maybe we'll build in the coming weeks. But this is the holiday challenge. We're really just trying to be accountable. So some of you guys might be thrilled and set that expectation that if you lose six pounds right now or this week and you don't lose a thing in the final two weeks, don't get upset with yourself because losing six pounds in a week is huge. Losing three pounds in a week is huge because the safe and effective way to lose a sustainable amount of weight going forward is anywhere between a half a pound and a pound a week, depending on how much weight you have to lose, okay? So we're in the holidays, the natural stress of getting all of our Christmas gifts handled, maybe scheduling Santa pictures or family activities or kids activities or just work is crazy, the home life is crazy, like that adds an element of stress. And when you're stressed out, then that triggers the hormone that will, um, the leptin hormone that will hold on to weight, okay? And that's what you need to be aware of. And so if you find you start to slip, okay, you have to take that into consideration. And I really encourage you to be accountable to the process. Write down the foods that you're eating down to every single bite. So when you do roll into these final weeks that you're kind of left to your own devices, right? We're still gonna have a lot of, we still have foods to work with because you've got that list, right? You have that low reactive list that I sent out a couple times because you're gonna pick and choose foods that you have interest in. And I want you to figure out how they feel. It's been fascinating to actually hear from some of you guys that posted saying, Gosh, I felt awful eating broccoli or cauliflower and green beans um, and something else. And um, it, 
that was like, that's the signals and cues that you need to listen to and you need to document because maybe it wasn't just the cauliflower, maybe it wasn't the green beans, but maybe it was the combination of the two, right? And this is what we have to embrace. It's a science experiment because you're the only one that's gonna know your body best. I can't, again, deliver a, a state-of-the-art, rock-solid nutrition program for you or meal plan for you that's gonna work for everybody because we're all wired differently. We all have different genetic makeup. We all have different um, predispositions, health issues, or um, histories, that kind of stuff, okay? So I just wanted to pop in, you guys, and first say how amazing this has been on for me uh, just to experience it with you guys alongside of you. I'm gonna post my pictures later, too, because um, I'm gonna, I'm totally vulnerable to the process as well. Um, but it's been it's just so enjoyable to experience this with you guys, but also be there as an advocate to help you guys get past some of the boundaries that you might set, the limiting beliefs that you might set for yourself, because it's easy to throw in the towel when you're like, well, so-and-so lost six pounds and I only lost two, right? Like it's not an only, if you lost half an ounce, you should celebrate because something is being purged and your body might take a little bit longer to purge the rest if you know you have a lot of weight to lose. If you carry a lot of muscle and you're like, I only lost a short amount, a little bit of weight, I didn't lose as much as I wanted to, it's because you have muscle and we know that muscle weighs more than fat, right? And so that has to take, be taken into consideration. So many variables, like to the point where you're like, Taryn, this is annoying, it's overwhelming. But I'm, you're not gonna find anything anywhere else that isn't going to be as overwhelming or at least isn't going to take a commitment from a long-term standpoint. I'm not going to teach you how to eat off one meal plan. I'm not gonna teach you how to intermittent fast. I'm not gonna teach you to eat a high, high fat, low carb diet. I'm not gonna teach you to be any one thing because it's not gonna work for everybody. And my goal is to help you find your very own meal plan and way of eating that is sustainable for the rest of your life right? Until you recognize, you know what? That food is not jamming with me right now. And now I'm seeing like, I'm feeling a little bit bloated now. I wonder what it is. And then you can start kind of, you've got tools to go back and reset and figure it out, right? Or you don't even have to go back too far. So I want you guys to start documenting days that you feel really good when you wake up, you know? And what did you eat the day before that you felt good? Like maybe if you saw that, um, those results on the scale the next day, what did you eat when we're after this reboot phase or during the reboot phase? Those are friendly days, right? And as you go into next week, recognizing what foods help you feel good and button up your pants, and then also what foods do not. And you're only gonna know that and remember by writing it down. Because I can always be like, oh God, yeah, totally, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts are like amazing and super healthy. But then it's quick to forget, oh right, broccoli just bloats me like crazy or I start to get the massive stomach pangs because it just, it doesn't work. And a lot of people feel that. But it could be the way you cook the Brussels sprouts. And that's when it gets really kind of interesting and maybe annoying because you have to start taking into consideration the foods that you are consuming and how you've cons prepared them. Everything from the seasonings, did you roast it, did you bake it? Um, same thing, I guess. Um, did you saute it? Did you um, steam them? You know, they're all can, they're all different in how they're prepared and how your body reacts to the uh, the chemical comb combination of how it's cooked and the gases that are released or the nutrients that are overdone or not done enough. You know, so a little bit sciency in that regard. Um, but just, I hope you guys trust this process and trust your bodies in knowing that it knows what it's going to do. And you're going to be super fascinated with the process. So, um, I'm thrilled that, um, you guys are enjoying this and at least learning something. Um, but just hang tight with me and we're going to get through this reboot phase and you're going to feel amazing. All right. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm here for you. Bye.